more than 50% of Europeans are overweight or obese. In the UK and in Hungary, more than 25% of the population are already obese. And in France and the UK, the rate of obesity has doubled in 20 years. This is a health crisis, an economic crisis. Sugar is killing Europe. If we look at the United States, we can see exactly where Europe's going to go. By 2030, 65% of the population of the United States will be obese. Mrs. Obama? Yes. Mrs. Obama, what is, what is some of your favorite foods? Yes, oh, I love sweet potatoes, I ah. love broccoli, and you know what? I love them when they're put on a pizza. I love veggie pizza. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? We're talking about healthy foods here. There's an obesity rate right now in the EU which is triggering. There's one child in three which is either overweight or obese. It's a trend that has been increasing for uh, the last 10 years, 15. Childhood obesity, only in 2008, it was one in four children. Just two years, three years later, it's one in three. Obesity is, is also uh, linked to a variety of health, uh, health problems, cardiovascular diseases, uh, diabetes, your bones, your muscles uh, really suffer certain type uh, of cancers. Mental health problems uh, tend to uh, be diagnosed more and more in, in people who are uh, overweight. Obesity certainly has um, an impact on the uh, economy because, of course, obesity leads to uh, non-communicable diseases. The total death that we have worldwide, 57 million deaths, two-thirds of those are related to the so-called non-communicable diseases. Those are diseases that can be cured outside the hospitals and can be cured and prevented. Now, if you think about two-thirds of total deaths, as an impact on the growth of a country. 10% more diseases, 0.5 less growth. It would seem that we can put ourselves in permanent economic recession simply by not taking care of our health system. Correct, totally correct. I mean, the, the number of uh, people that come to work and they are not productive because they don't take care of their own health is impacting heavily on the productivity. Does consumer education work in this instance? Uh, consumer education is crucial in that area and we think that you know installing a kind of traffic light uh, would would work would um, work in this direction because this kind of color coding is very effective because what's more universal than a traffic light the thing is that at european level right now there is quite some reluctance and there is unfortunately a lot of lobbying behind it because uh, they deem that uh, it would be a barrier to trade for instance that it would deter some consumers to buy their products is the food lobby influential in the european commission yes they are really strong very powerful well organized uh, quite often they operate secretly. We asked the European Commission to contribute to this program. They couldn't find a commissioner, a spokesperson or an expert to speak about the biggest health issue facing Europe today. For Europe today, the issue is not about quantity, it's about quality. We would need harmonized standards because at the moment it, it is too much in the hands of industry and we would like first the government to take uh, the lead on it and then of course you know you have the first head the government and then we would like also an EU lead because at the moment it's too much in the hands of the industry. You can still see that the, the whole attitude towards the policies and, and messages that we as public health uh, community would like to see being regulated etc are not really seriously taken into, into account because of um, uh, the Commission and then the Member States uh, more and more actually uh, protecting uh, economic operators uh, than uh, health of the people. So free market first, health second. Yes. I know you've heard about the new hand-tossed pizza from Pizza Hut. It is good to the last garlic buttery bite. Ready? Break. Now your game time decision is easy with the big dinner box. It's at McDonald's. Welcome, my friends. <laughs> You can get a Happy Meal featuring your favorite hero from the new DreamWorks movie. In terms of advertising when it comes to uh, children as well, yeah. is, is this an issue in terms of obesity? Yes, it is related, but um, we know that some industry have pledged to, to, to work on uh, marketing to kids. And there are some pledges and commitments, but it's, very, it's going very slow and it's, 
there is still a lot of work to do. So there's a, we know there's a, um, a rising consumer consciousness, uh, especially in the United States. I challenge those leaders to market food more responsibly to our children. Uh, I challenge them to use creative, innovative marketing strategies to get our kids excited about healthy foods. And today, uh, just six weeks later, it is no surprise that Sesame Workshop uh, was the first organization to answer this call. <laughs> is that funny, Elmo? Mike Bloomberg would have said in New York as well. He, he was very paternalistic in taking uh, care of, of New Yorkers when he looked at the soda drinks, for example. Not very popular move, but he identified a, a clear cause uh, of obesity uh, and other complications in health uh, and said we can't continue with this. Um, is this the kind of pattern which you expect governments to become, and cities in particular, to become much more paternalistic in, in the care of their citizens? It basically, it's just giving people the right conditions to make healthier choices. At the end, I do not believe that um, one needs to tell you what you need to do. They need to give you the tools to take better care of yourself. How do consumers make these decisions then? They make this decision thanks to a clear information. And right now, that's, um, that's not the case. Nutritionists have for generations told us that a calorie is just a calorie. So if you eat less and exercise more, your weight will drop. But this simply isn't true. New research shows us a calorie is not just a calorie. Obesity is not just about how much you eat. Obesity is about sugar. Specifically, Obesity is about fructose. Glucose can be absorbed by most of the body, but fructose can only be processed by the liver. To deal with the overload of fructose, the body produces more insulin. The insulin then blocks a hormone called leptin. Leptin helps us limit our food intake. It tells us when we're full. So if the insulin blocks the leptin, we don't know when we're full. We keep eating, we keep adding calories. The consequence today is obesity. A massive decline in productivity and a massive increase in healthcare costs. It, it is now the role of the, of the industry to, to see the link and to act upon it. But I guess they have a too short-term vision and uh, that's what we need right now at the European level, that we need more a long-term vision so we can link the two and act at the root of the problem instead of trying to solve the issue once it's there. The European Commission knows what causes obesity. The European Commission can see what the consequence of obesity is going to be for this generation and for the next. When is the time to act? It's not too late, but uh, we need to act now and uh, that's why we don't understand why the things are being stuck because also the, the European Commission has acknowledged there, that there is a problem. The WHO has said it as well and there has been some action with the European Commission with the setup of uh, this EU diet platform which has been uh, up and running since 2006 but we know that um, it's very slow again and it's very vague because we need some very precise targets. We shouldn't wait too long, we should act right now. There are no easy choices for Europeans. We have to make the hard decisions now or we pay a much bigger price later. The single market depends on our capacity to act now.